the staircase to go up to the roof is a straight run, and that's all contained within that section. The rear section of it is for the mechanicals to be enclosed as, to, uh, as opposed to being on the roof. So his air conditioning and so forth will be enclosed within that, uh, and the, the vent actually is, is on that side of the building, uh, which you have before you uh, is owned by the Cavallos and then signed off on that originally and then signed off on this as well. We've given you four uh, letters from uh, the Abadas. Uh, on this side, this is uh, Mr. Cordiello, this is Mr. Cavallo. On the other side of Stillman is uh, the DeMores, and across the street is uh, Ken Robbins and the uh, True Valley, all of whom uh, have submitted letters of support. The roof. Uh, the questions come up is what is he doing with the roof and it continues to be the same as what he had said originally for the original roof, etc. He's planning that this get dressed up a little with some shrubbery and Giovanni has indicated that he'd like to have some type of a green garden, garden type of situation up there where he can do some herbs and tomatoes and things like that. There's not a seeding plan for that. It's not applied for seeding. It's nothing to do with the zoning for seeding. That question uh, came up at the last meeting. Uh, and also, if you look at it, if you take those numbers I gave you before, about roughly 900 gross square feet, and when you take out those head houses and you take out the parapet wall, you're talking about rather a small amount of space uh, in that area anyway, so uh, it's not uh, a space that's going to have much utility other than to uh, make the building look nice and uh, Giovanni being somewhat creative lots of the reserves and stuff up there he can. Um, the restaurant is expected because it's on the lease currently. Uh, Mr. Oliva will be naturally uh, for Mr. Oliva. Uh, uh, there is not a second use. It's not going to be a second restaurant. Uh, in other words, there's only a single plan. There's only seating up there. There's no kitchens or anything like that. So this can't turn into two restaurants as opposed to just the one. Um, Another question that has come up is uh, what about the fact that uh, you're using the second floor for a restaurant? My quick little survey, which uh, was actually corrected, the two more got added to the list. There are 13 locations in the North End where we have second floor uh, restaurant use. Uh, and Brad Loft will tell you if you want uh, where they are and what they are. So it's, it's not the first time something like this has been done. And what I point out is this. We're not converting somebody's apartment into restaurant use. We're taking blank space and creating additional space. And, uh, and the most likely use is a restaurant. It's not likely uh, Chris determined that he could ever get any useful residential use on this property. And the reason for that is he would have to create uh, two staircases to access the upper floors if he added another two or three floors of residential use, let's say. Uh, he has to have two staircases going up and down. Uh, when you start doing the math of those numbers, it makes them very, very small units. Uh, plus, you lose part of the restaurant space because you have to dedicate uh, the staircase to the residential. You can't walk through the restaurant to go to the residential apartment. So it didn't seem practical to him. And this seemed as if this was the most practical use of the space uh, and for a tenant that he already has. Any questions on that? No. You need a second, I can the right time. You do. But what I'm saying is, if you want to now do apartments, so you have to have the egress for the restaurants. Then you have to have the true egress for the residential, the, the residential for the egress through the restaurant to the lobby. So by the time you configure all those egresses on 900 square feet, you don't have any apartments, basically. How long has the uh, restaurant, current restaurant been in operation? Uh, under a year. Under a year. So I guess I have to think my question would be, what has he learned in the course of the year that's driven the need to expand? Well, this, this comes as the owner's application, meaning what makes sense for the property is uh, Chris's investment in the property turned out to be a lot more expensive than originally expected, number one. And uh, quite honestly, puts him in a position where 
uh, he's renting a minimum amount of space uh, to do it because that's all the space there is. So what makes sense is, uh, one, he would like to expand on the building so that there's more return for him. And Giovanni says he, in fact, could use more seating of the 34 seats that he has. Now, Giovanni is there under, don't hold me off to go from recollection, but I believe he has a 10 and 5, something like that, about a 15 year lease. So he's in there for the long run, as far as he's concerned, and that's really I tell us what the restaurant's doing. But Chris would change, though, is the lease would change as the building. Well, the lease would change the annual space, for but not probably, likely not the term. So the original lease didn't foresee a second floor? No, there's nothing in the original lease that, that provides for a second floor. Uh, uh, as, as I'm saying, as Chris has looked at this in terms of what can you do with the property, and uh, as we've said, uh, the practicality of adding uh, residential use isn't really a, a practical matter. There's got to be an agreement between the landlord and the tenant. Oh, yeah, no, no. Just take one out of another 56 to your restaurant. Oh, no, no, no. Giovanni, Giovanni, you know, if and when this is approved, Giovanni would be back because he has to apply to the licensing board to change the description of his premises to increase the size uh, and add the, the seating upstairs. We can't, for example, our calculations are calculations, meaning uh, if he wants to change the arrangement of that seating and do something else, that's a matter of him, you, and the licensing board, which I presume will be back to the end of time. But there's nothing going on the second floor that would allow independent use, meaning that there are no utilities up there where you can cook, for example. So it's not going to be some place where you're going to visit what about a second many, restaurant. What about how many people wait on the roof, for example, in the summer time? No. Right. no, no right. That, that has to be allowed by two things. It has to be allowed by ISD for uh, weight bearing and second has to be allowed by the licensing board because then it has to be in the description of the premises. You know, as you well know, is any, any place where your customers are uh, has to be compiling your premises and it has to be approved by the licensing board. So the rules definitely need to be used for his personal use, like gardening and stuff? It may or may not. May, yeah, may not be practical. It thinks it's a, kind of a neat idea. So, you know, whether, you know, whether putting basil and tomatoes on the roof in terms of the practical idea. No, 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 no. But what will definitely go on the roof is, is what you see. So, uh, Chris wants to dress the roof, as he calls it, right. by having shrubbery there because he thinks it looks nicer for the building. Uh, so that will be there. Everybody has a question. Yes. Yeah. From looking at that picture, he wants to expand to go up to this crowd. Yes. And where the shrubbery is, is that going to be like an outdoor patio? No, just to, no. just putting it in. And, and to explain it, some you know, it's been asked it is it, it's in a sense it's not the purview of, of the zoning board, it's the purview of the political licensing board. Chris is not the holder of the license, that's Giovanni, he has to go through a whole separate process, which means the fact that he does that Chris does this doesn't say that Giovanni can use the roof. Okay. He can use the roof in terms of uh, both the Chris and him for access and stuff like that for his, his uh, mechanicals that are going to be here. Uh, Chris doesn't object to him using it for tomato plants, but uh, it can't be seeding unless it's approved subsequently by ISD because it has to have uh, access. I don't know that. Chris, well, I, there's not two ways off the roof. Right? No, right now. There aren't two ways off the roof, so you can't get ISD approval for people occupying the roof. In other words, the um, the owner of the building and the tenant can access the roof for, for their needs, but the public, let's say, invitees, uh, restaurant patrons, can't because there aren't two means of egress from this roof. You, you have, this is the means of egress, not to have the public at the so it's similar to a residential building where it has to be access to the roof. Except but private but private it's, roof space. But it's it's restricted. In other words, I see you, you know you have to put the alarm now you now you have to alarm your roof. Your roof has to um, you have, the access to your roof or the door to your roof now has to be alarmed. I think that's right. But then a residential building right, to be honest, I'm not familiar with that. That's so my, my, my question was if, if if there was roof access 
that would have to be added to your occupancy, wouldn't it? Well, it is a place. Well, through licensing, that, that's what you're trying to say. So well, if they went through access, it would two, increase capacity. You have, you have two processes that he, or Oliva, the tenant would have to go through. One is, as this is designed, there's only one means of egress from the roof. The single means of egress from the roof means that it has to be what they call private as opposed to public. So, for example, if you have a building that has three residential units in it, if the top floor uses the roof deck, you only need one means of egress is considered to be private to that unit. If the entire building uses it, or if a, a place of public accommodation, being the restaurant, is using it, you need two means. So, but it is very similar to residential. If you put a roof deck for common use, it's, you have to get mm -hmm. right. You have to, you have to, and then, even if ISD approves that, you then have to go to the liquor licensing board because it becomes part of the so-called okay. licensed premises. My question is, the shrubs were great, and I know we need to utilize as much of, uh, of open space as possible when people ask for private roof decks, you know, and we don't have a problem with it because there isn't much open space in the neighborhood and people are trying to maximize open space, so to speak. Uh, how high are the shrubs going to be? In other words, how are we going to know? How are we going to know even? I mean, I, I don't know what kind of plants you put on there, but I'm looking at that and I'm saying, if I'm walking down the street and I'm looking up at the roof, how do I know who's up there anyways? Maybe people are hanging out waiting having a glass of wine. Well, well you know keep in mind, you have, you, have, you have residential buildings on the other side of the street that can look out and see that. I mean, you have uh, the Mori building on, on this side of Stillman Street that you know, can look over and see the roof. So it's not going to that it's private and you can't see it. They're from across the street. Right. For that, for that to be approved as a roof deck, they have to build a second set of stairs coming right. off the roof. Okay. Right. And, and keep in mind, if we're looking at this, and, and, and as you see from the violation, this is, is wall to wall. So if you're doing uh, another staircase, you have to go internal uh, for another staircase, and we do your restaurant on the inside. Well, I understand all that. I just, if he was to use the roof steeper, under this plan that doesn't call for it, if he was to use it, he could lose his license. No, I understand. No, no, but he can't. If he was to use it, he could apply for a change of location. 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 He said, how are we going to know if you're not just using it? The answer is if he get caught, he loses his license, his permit to lose his license. It would be the same as answering the question, would you ever add a third floor to the building? the answer to the question, but it's the same process, meaning you have to go just as we are tonight through the Zoning Board of Appeal again. Uh, and if that third floor is restaurant again, you have to go back through the licensing board with whoever is the restaurant. So you, you have uh, two sets of processes to follow uh, in order to do whatever it is, whether you know, if, if it's a contemplation. And this happened, I remember when we did the original restaurant, the same question came up as, uh, you know, are you going to use the, the roof as uh, outdoor dining? I'm telling you exactly what I told you two years ago, uh, which is it's not designed for outdoor dining, and there were limitations on how you could use it, and why it's difficult to contemplate that as being outdoor dining. So was the question asking you to build up the added no, second no, story? I, I don't want to say it's funny. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't planned. You know, at the beginning, but I don't recall that you know, as being one of the questions. I guess it was just one. My interpretation in Sonoma is that you were approved with less than, well, the building's been in operation for less than a year mm -hmm. as one floor, and then you now get approval for all those things at a smaller scale, and now you're adding another level. And what would kind of prevent us from thinking that then? You know, you would we're slowly kind of piecing this together, so it's not seen as this big grandiose project, but ultimately that is the grandiose plan. The the, an, the answer there. Well, we'll have to come back anyways. Oh, yeah, but that's just, I know, but I, I still think that. Why well, there, 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 now these, there's many people on this panel that are going to be and people that are going to be pissed. The question is again, as Mr. Yang develops this project. What stage of the project are we in? Are the secondary stage or the tertiary stage or the ending stage? Will there be another floor added? Will there be a uh, roof added? Or okay. These are all going to be question marks that we're going to have to see around. Yeah. Answer. I think there are many other people in the panel would like to answer all the questions first. You know what I mean? 
and say, all right, this is what we're doing, great. This is what we're looking forward to. You know, we have a restaurant with 30 seats, we have a restaurant with 60 seats. Right. And with the possibility of having roof access if the proper permit can be obtained. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's answer them all. And, and that is, every property proposal that comes before you comes before you as it's proposed, meaning simply this, is that uh, if Chris Young were to sell this building a year, five years, or ten years from now, because the next individual will say he wants the third floor of the building. There are no answers to those questions. They're all hypothetical questions. And the same here is that uh, it was not the question, as I said, Chris is not here, but it was not Chris's plan two years ago that this would be two stories if he could renovate the building, lease it, uh, and have the basement of the first floor of the building. <coughs> and in fact, garner sufficient enough rent to cover his investment in the building and make it a worthwhile venture. Um, the anomaly of what he undertook uh, showed itself later on when they started opening up and realized that they had to go into the basement and redo the foundation. They had to do the support walls on all sides of the building. Uh, they had to put extra support uh, in the roof itself because of the way the building sits with no other supports, etc. So uh, it became a very expensive project for a very small restaurant. And it wasn't that he planned, uh, or Giovanni coming into a plan that he's going to have 60 seats as opposed to 4 seats. It's just that uh, the opportunity is here. And I think. Anyone, Chris or anyone else, looks at it and says, Can I do this and make a use of the property? Keep in mind, it's a single story building. It's kind of a rarity to have single story buildings uh, in the Mont then, and um, it lends itself to being something other than a single story building. And it fits in nicely, and you know, importantly, his neighbors uh, you know, are fully supportive of this, uh, most of whom have owned their properties for years and years and years. Um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the worries of the uh, Cubbios, uh, et cetera, Ken Rock, et cetera, they're all been in those locations for as long as I can remember. So uh, they don't see this as an issue. Is there the demand there for 60 million? That's a business decision. Does that mean? Go ahead, John. No, I mean, it could also be, a, if the demand's not there for that restaurant, right, then it could also switch to a different restaurant, right? Sure. And a different piece and owner. Does anyone, I mean, first of all, are there any abutters in there, or does if anyone want to speak in opposition, speak in support, anyone here that would like to say anything? Hi. Wait, just stay here, please. I live on 90 Stanley Street. Just one house over. Um, I would like to know what the state is. And um, as far as I know, Kenny, who's across the street, that is in a that is so in agreement, rolls it all up at 8 o'clock, he goes home. Sure. Doesn't, it doesn't live. It doesn't have a noise all night long. Okay. Uh, I'm very much against the second floor. Uh, I think there's enough traffic as it is on Salem Street, enough noise. As far as I'm concerned, you come back a year later for a second floor, you're going to put that roof back in, and everybody knows you're going to come back because it's going to be all set up, and all you got to do is put another little exit in there and ask for a roof deck, and everybody else has it in the north end. Why can't we have it? Enough. It's just enough. I oppose it. I just don't feel that you have. You should go up. I think that there's enough going on on Salem Street that we don't need 60 seats and people standing outside. And I, I, my window is right there. It is second floor. I listen to everything that goes back and forth. As far as I'm concerned, Mickey, the morning, done. He just. He's the loudest on the street. He's the dirtiest on the street. I want to agree with him for anything. He can send 7,000 letters, okay? Nothing. I am just tired of listening to all the, oh, but maybe next year. No, we have to go through this. We have, yes, you are going to go through that. In two years, you are going to be in front of this board saying, oh, yeah, but, you know, we've been there now, and, Everybody likes us, and let us just put a roof there. We promise we'll be quiet. It doesn't go. I'm sorry. I oppose it. I'm sorry. Did anyone else have anything? Anyone else want to speak? Um, you know, like, uh, uh, 
Mr. Poole said if there is a roof tech request that does come back, I can certainly tell you that I have always auto seating. So, um, you know, I call it the president, but I would certainly not support auto seating. Um, does anyone else want to ask a question? Anyone on the council before we make a motion? Let me just add, I mean, as far as restrictions, uh, we don't have a problem uh, with the restriction. So, again, okay, the restrictions are, are, are fairly positive in zoning matters. If uh, the roof is not to be for restaurant use, I would, uh, let's word it better. If it's not to be for habitable restaurant using people on the roof, in other words, if, if Giovanni can, can put his plants out there, et cetera, you don't have a problem with that, fine. If, in fact, you want it restricted so that people, uh, clients, customers, patrons aren't on there, that's something that you can submit as part of your uh, decision, as part of the appeals board decision itself. The, uh, another question, you have a bunch of big windows on the doors. Are the windows going to be open on the windows upstairs? With the windows, uh, there's windows downstairs that open. They will be open. Downstairs ones. And what we've told people before, we will again, I think you'll see this, I think, uh, in terms of the city's yeah. actions that I'm aware of, is I think windows mm -hmm. are now have to be closed at 11 o'clock at night uh, if you have anything going on inside the restaurant. So we don't have a problem with that either. Can I ask another question too, because I'm, I'm trying to picture that street. I'm not really familiar. I'm familiar, but I'm not really. It's not coming to my mind. What's across the street? Is that a one-story building too, or is that a two-story building? Well, uh, there's both. Yeah. Uh, Kenny's building, Kenny Rockland is the uh, hardware store. That's one story, and then I think this might just touch on the next building, which might be four stories. We have the uh, fish store, etc. Can't think of exactly what's across. Doesn't reach that far. Doesn't reach that far. The next building yeah, there's one store across from him, and then there's all there's a restaurant and stores. And then, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think that you know, we just just hearing things that he's concerned, you know, with the noise. Uh, open windows on both sides, too, you know, there will be open windows on, mm -hmm. on those right here. That, that brings the noise level to a different level, you know. Well, again, this I've said, first of all. Giovanni has the 11 weekdays, 12 o'clock weekdays. And um, the discussion that I understand going on at the licensing boards at City Hall is that they are going to float the proposal that anyone that has open windows have to be closed at 11 o'clock, regardless of what's going on. For everybody. For everybody. So, and, and, and I can tell you, I know that this is not the, the zoning issue, but what I'm, what I'm saying to you is that for the purpose of Giovanni's restaurant, etc. Uh, I know he doesn't have an issue with closing his windows on the so, you know, he can tell you that uh, you know, when, in fact, he comes here, he comes after this is approved. I know, I know 11 is a policy, and I mean, I'm going to license him all the time. It's, um, it's also extremely difficult to enforce that. I know. Well, George, I'll tell you, I'll put me, don't put me, I know, I'm just going to say it's hard to like otherwise. And, and I understand that, and that's a you know, debate for another day. You know, some people leave their uh, their windows open until 1 o'clock in the morning, but um, well, because you know, I, right do, now I, do know, I do know that licensing, um, the Boston Police Department's licensing division has been down here an awful lot more than they have in the past. Um, I will say that, but it, you know, um, you know, it's really just the word of, uh, you know, it's, it's the good faith of the business. And I know Chris isn't the business owner, he's the property owner. No, that's that's why I'm saying it's not Chris representing that. Yeah. I will tell you. And if, if the zoning portion is approved, and I know Giovanni would close the windows, whether it's required by the licensing board or not, we get a great close those windows at 11 o'clock. I think we were asked, we may have been asked that question uh, when we came first. So, 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 Billy, I mean, you know, I think that we, 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 all, we all know for sure, and I think that. Um, as you know, being in the real estate business, I know that he is probably one of the most responsible property owners that I, I deal with. And um, and I think that we would all like to support that, but there's concerns about the way that people have been inching and, and creeping and encroaching and you know, getting one portion and then another portion. And I think that um, if you think that Chris would agree that put the restriction on outside seating on the roof. Well, that, I'm, I'm telling you all right. The problem with that, I think that it kind of changes well, how people feel about it a little bit. What I'm saying to you is exactly that. And, and what I'm saying is, as far as building on the building, I don't think, 
myself or Chris or any property owner would tell you, I'll never do another thing with my property you know, until the end of time. Uh, I don't think that's fair to any property owner, and I wouldn't advocate for that for clients either, is what the future brings in the future. But as far as the use of the roof for customers of the restaurant, that, that issue as a restriction is not an issue that Chris is going to object to. So a proviso that no customer access on the roof. Sure. Right. So, you know. Because I think that changes it a little right. bit. Maybe right. if we name them. Can I ask? No, I understand. What happens if he sells it? If that stays, it goes, it goes, with, it goes with the real estate. Yeah. That, if, if that's imposed by the zoning board, no matter who buys the property, it's a, it's it's a condition that goes with the real estate. You buy this, and you're basically purchasing the building with. It's like when you buy a building that's 54 feet. You you, you buy it 54 feet. You can't go up no matter what. You know what I mean? Well, if this no, is not that he's going to go up, but that they can no, put a roof there. Yeah, if this is only there's access. Once there's a headhouse, you know there's access. And well, all well, they have to do is get someone right. to agree. Understood. But well, what we're going to do is we're going to put yeah. the proviso in, or we're going to motion, or right. someone's going to make a motion if they want, and like we're going to see if we vote on that. Yeah. Their windows. They have a second floor, right. and their windows are open all night, and you. Oh, what happens at the zoning, what happens at the ZBA is, is out of our hands. What no. we do is we send a letter or we go well, out look, and say look, that. So you, have, you understand why it's important. That, uh, the proviso is not owned by the restaurant or even the property. It's by the property, meaning that like the deed restriction, it's, it's very similar to that. So that if you put a proviso in the zoning board decision, if they go ahead and try to put something on the roof, it violates what the zoning board has given them, meaning the entire second floor could be considered to be illegal because they violated that provision. So, provisors are common at the zoning Okay, board. but wasn't it at one time that you couldn't do restaurants on second floors? Those, those are... Wasn't that kind of right. a that's, rule that was set in? Well... A law or whatever you want to call it. It's, that's a zoning regulation. That's okay. why this so, is going... Okay, but there are This is why so it's it going... can be done. Well, what I'm saying to you is the proviso on the decision. If you, someone takes it upon themselves to violate it, it violates the uh, decision itself, meaning the decision would be to allow a second floor use for a restaurant. If you go ahead and do a deck when the proviso says there's to be no uh, patrons on the roof, okay, you violated that, and the zoning board can remove your right to use the second floor. So that's, that's the weight of that. It's not something that you take lightly. Uh, a proviso with a zoning decision is very serious. All right, we're going to we're going to have uh, someone. We're going to take a vote. So, does anyone um, um, want to make a motion? You support? Um, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that um, we support 78A Commercial Street for Shum, this property owner, with a um, with this uh, second you? second floor second floor expansion of the restaurant, the existing restaurant, to uh, two seat two two story building with um, restrictions, um, deep restrictions on uh, any public roof access. Can I just help you with that one? Go ahead. It's actually a zoning board proviso. It would not be proper terminology. Thank you. So ZBA proviso um, with no customer access on roof. That's my motion. Does anyone second the motion? I second. Thank you. Motion has been second. So Tony, um, a motion to support has been second. The motion is to, uh, to support uh, um, the addition of the second mm -hmm. floor um, to expand the restaurant currently occupying the property with proviso that no customer access uh, be allowed on the roof. All in favor? One, two, three, four. All four in favor, all opposed? One, two, three, four, five. So, four, five in opposition. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.